All right. I'm Mayor Tony Gross, and I hereby call to order the April, or sorry, <laughs> the May 21st, 2020 meeting of the Kingston Springs Board of Commission. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic and in accordance with Governor Bill Lee's Executive Order 16, this meeting is being conducted with limited fiscal public access. The meeting is being made available, however, <laughs> to public participation via live video stream on Zoom on the Zoom application. John, could you please call the roll? Josh Etherly? Here. Tony Gross? Here. Mike Hargis? Here. Jeff Lorenz is absent. Glenn Remy? Here. All right, we have a quorum. Uh, do we have a motion to approve the April 16th, 2020 City Commission meeting minutes? And please, uh, before you make a motion, state your name and, uh, and then uh, same thing with a second. I approve Glenn. Second? I second my part. All right. We have a motion and a second. Uh, all in favor, and then John, could you call the roll, I guess? Josh Heatherly? Yes. Tony Gross? Yes. Mike Hargis? Yes. Jeff Lorenz is absent. Glenn Remick? Yes. All right, motion passes. We have a motion next to approve the May 21st, 2020 City Commission agenda. Do we have a motion? Motion to approve, Glenn. Second. Second, Josh. John, could you call the roll? Josh Heatherly? Yes. Cody Gross? Yes. Mike Hargis? Yes. Jeff Lorenz is absent, Glenn Remy? Yes. Motion passes. Uh, community input and concerns. I don't believe we have any community to give input or concerns tonight, so we can move on to. No, we uh, have announcements from commissioners. Oh, announcements from commissioners. Glenn, would you like to start with an announcement from the commissioner? I would indeed. I would like to say that they're doing a great job down at the park mowing. Um, I, I'm really been impressed. Uh, we've been getting a lot of positive feedback from people who are uh, at the park and seeing the, the new mowers. Uh, in addition, I'd like to go on a quick little speech here. As elected officials of the town of Kingston Springs, it is our duty to represent the people of the town of Kingston Springs on this board of commissioners. One of our primary roles is to oversee our town's budget, which will be having its first reading tonight. I feel this year we need to be very careful, very cautious, and frugal with our town's finances. During our budget workshop, one of the troubling areas of discussion was pay increases to employees. It has become evident that employees of the town are not aware of when or how much their increase will be. We as the commission approve or disapprove cost of living increases each year, anywhere between two to 5%, depending on the budget. The actual cost of living last year was 1.3%. I believe we approved a 5% increase. I have always felt that anything over the actual cost of living would be considered a pay increase. This does not seem to be the case. I find it impossible for the town to anticipate and try and manage costs if we do not have a set pay system in place for employees. A five-year budget projections are tossed out the window when we adjust pay increases randomly and without anticipation. I am all in support of adjusting a talented employee's pay in order to secure and keep them working for the town. I would strongly disagree with the employee's pay increases that are randomly proposed because they feel they did not have a pay increase in many years. I would hope the city manager would be able to put a pay system in place so that we, the commission, can anticipate payroll increases. Um, I would also like to share, it was wonderful in the budget workshop to see if somebody in the department had uh, find uh, areas to cut back. That really helped and uh, that is very much appreciated. Thank you. All right, Josh. Uh, you have I do not. Good information, Glenn. All right, Mike. Oh, yes. No announcements. All right. I did want to take a minute to, to thank our fire department. We had a uh, truck tip over in our parking lot last uh, a couple of weeks ago, and you guys did a great job, fire department that might hear this, and our public uh, safety officers also. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Bob. <laughs> uh, the, the whole deal went well. They were able to get things cleared out, and I just really appreciate the work they do. All right, let's move on then to department reports. Uh, do we have anything to add to the department reports that have been distributed? No, sir. Okay. Uh, legal? Um, nice. John, I did have something. Oh, okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Have, yes, please, Chief under, Ivy. Under the department reports, um, we have currently uh, just hired a new employee 
And during the process, I guess when we changed the mileage last time, we really didn't give much thought to where we're attracting police officers from. And I think that the current policy had been changed to 15 miles from City Hall, which is almost impossible to find an officer that lives within that 15 miles. I would like to see that change to anywhere in Cheatham County or 30 miles from City Hall. Um, I feel like that's still reasonable. I know that Ashland City has employees that live in Kingston Springs and drive their vehicles home. Um, Bell Mead has employees that live in Dixon and drive their vehicle home. So it's common around our area um, for 30 miles is not uncommon. So I would like to see that change because that's one of the big benefits when you hire an employee as a police officer to come back. Thanks. Hey, we gonna say Chief, our current officers, they they take in with their vehicles home, right? They do. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. I think it's a great idea. No, that's I think it's essential. Makes sense. Perfect sense. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I don't see any reason why we wouldn't change that from 15 to 30. That makes sense. Okay, I appreciate it. I think that'll make a big difference. Do we need to do a... a that'll have to be a change in the work policy. Yeah, so we have to put that on the agenda okay. for next month. Yes, okay. so okay. we'll have an ordinance change in next month. Okay, perfect. Okay. Good. Any other uh, department updates? That's it for me. Legal? All right. As you guys know, um, they are expecting uh, the legislature to go back in session on June 1st. Um, so we're not sure how much legislation they're actually getting into um, or if it's just going to be, you know, absolutely just minimal uh, items. Uh, so we will definitely be keeping up to date on any changes that come in uh, affecting cities. Also, John and I have been working, and, and John, you uh, may have more to expand upon this. Last year, MTAS had started working on updating our municipal code for us uh, uh, with all the changes that had come about in the last uh, year or so. I understand that they have uh, sent us their version, their finished product. Uh, and so John and I are going to be going through that and taking a look at that uh, just to refine it and look at a couple other things that we may want to go ahead and get passed before they print the final version for us so it'll all be cleaned up in one book without a bunch of additional addendums. That's correct. All right, on to unfinished business. Um, item A is a motion to approve the second reading of ordinance 20-002 amending certain portions of the Town of Kingston Springs employee work policy. Um, do you want to, we went over this last month, do you want to expound on it any? I don't imagine. All right, do we, do we have a motion? And please state your name when you make the motion. Mike Hargis, I make the motion and we make the changes to the employee policy. All right, do we have a second? Second, Glenn. All right, all in, or sorry, could you please call the roll, John? Josh Anderley. Uh, Josh is muted, sorry. Hey Tony. Yes. Um, let me ask Martha a question. Since okay. this is okay, well, go ahead. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just this is an ordinance on the the employee work policy, which is what Bubba was just talking about. Can you amend that while you've got it and make that change? I don't think that would be wise to do tonight um, because I would want to specifically refer to the sections in the personnel policy dealing with distance from work, et cetera. Uh, and especially since this is on a second reading, I, I think we'd be better served to make sure that we've got it. I, there's not a chance to correct mistakes if there's a typographical something or whatever that I might have put in there trying to throw it together tonight for passage, if that makes sense. Okay, that's fine. I just you know, thought it was the same thing I'd ask. Sure, sure. I, I thought that too, Debbie. I, I flipped through to, to double check on it. And I thought that that's gonna be, um, I, I think, Probably not the most prudent step to take so we'll just we'll start with a fresh thing uh next time okay all right we were on uh, we were on you josh and i believe you said yes yes all right on gross yes mike hargis 
Yes. Jeff Lorenz is absent. Glenn Rennie. Yes. All right. Motion passes. On to new business. Item A is a motion to approve first reading of Ordinance 20-003, the 2020-2021 budget. Um, Debbie, you want to speak to this any before we? Um, I think that um, Tony John um, would like for you all to make an amendment. Um, and it'll be in the amount of $1,344. He would like to um, um, give the phone allowance to um, two employees that do not currently have that. Um, and that's not budgeted. It would need to be budgeted. So you would have to amend the budget to do that. So to expand on what uh, Debbie had mentioned, uh, both Jamie and Brittany do not receive phone allowances, but as their jobs have morphed over the last several months, both of them use their personal phones quite a bit to interact with employees. Jamie trying to get uh, time cards, working through blue sheets and purchase orders, and Brittany working with the police officers and with codes enforcement. Uh, both of them use their personal phone to interact both with calls and texts. So um, we thought that it was just fitting for them to receive the phone allowance since they are using their phones quite a bit. And the phone allowance is about 600 a piece or so, sounds like? It's $56 a month, Mike, it, okay. for all each right. employee. Mm -hmm. How, who all receives the phone allowance currently? That would be um, Brandy, Bubba, myself, Roger Parker. I don't know, Josh, I'd have to think. I think well, that makes and Brittany probably are the only two that don't get it. That might be a better way to go about it. And Doris. Doris. And, and Doris. Doris does not. Um, I, I think, you know, times have changed. We struggle with this too. Um, I, I am in favor of it, but I think we should look at as we move further, is the office on a, is the landline a voice over IP or is it a standard landline? It's VOIP. We use Peace Communications. Um, does that, does Peace Communications have any type of app for smartphones to utilize the desk phone number? Possibly. The only reason I bring this up is, you know, moving forward, you know, we, we've added employees and this gets quite expensive. We've gone through this research and if you have a good voice over IP system that has a good app based, you can utilize the texting through that and it minimizes the cost to the, and it, and it kind of keeps all your numbers together. You know, the city owns all the information. So if someone leaves, say somebody leaves a position, then that number just goes to the next person in that same position. You know, people don't have to learn a new phone number. So that's just something for the future. Okay. Good. Yeah, I'll definitely check on that. And if I could jump in there too for open records purposes, you know, when, you, when you've got employees using personal telephones to conduct business, you know, text messages going back and forth, even if it's on their personal phones, if it's related to town business, that is subject to open records requests. Yeah, and that, that was kind of my general concern. It just, there's just a lot of liability there. Okay. I'm in favor of the amendment, though. Okay. All right. Um, is that the only thing you had to add, Debbie and John? Um, the only other thing, Tony, is that we got a, a letter from that Transit Alliance of Middle Tennessee after we had already had our workshops and stuff where they were requesting um, a $500 donation. Um, they, they request money every year, but you all always choose to give it to the ARC because if, I, if I'm understanding correctly, the only thing that, that they do for this side is like Meals on Wheels and Art in the Park handles that. But that is up to you all if you wish to make an amendment and give them that donation. And it's called transit? Yeah, I, I don't really know a lot about it, Tony, do you? 
Well, okay. I, well, there was I, I'm there was a Cumberland region thing. Is that what that is? A car, and then there there is a, there is a Transit Alliance, which is actually about trans, transit in in Middle Tennessee. It doesn't have anything. To that's do what with I thought. It. Yeah, I thought it was about. Yeah. That. So maybe that's where I'm confused. Is that the other one was dealing with Meals on Wheels, and and this one, but unless they've changed. I didn't think that they offered any transportation for Kingston Springs. Okay, well, there was a, the, the the Transit Alliance is that 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 would I, I believe that, that refers to to actually just looking. They, they don't provide transit for anybody, but that's about dealing with with transit in general for Middle Tennessee. Okay. Right. Uh, 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 Mid Cumberland, something I can't. I, that, that, that did provide uh, transportation for seniors and so on. I think to hospital and doctor visits, and they also did something with uh, Meals on Wheels, but then ARC took over that. So those would be two separate things. But okay. I, I haven't seen that letter, so I I, I can't speak uh, in, in an educated manner on the topic. So I think John, don't you have that? I'm sorry, don't I have what? The letter that we got from that Transit Alliance. I do. Requesting a donation. Somewhere, yes. If I don't, I can find it. Okay. Well, maybe, I mean, we could always add that on second reading even. So let's just probably not worry about that right now. So. Okay. Okay. Um, so we have the single amendment here that, uh, that John would like for the um, uh, employee uh, uh, phone uh, lines and, uh, and, and that, that would be it. Do we have a motion to approve first reading of ordinance 20-003? Motion to approve Glenn. As amended. Second. Second. Okay. As amended. Do I have a second? Josh, second. Is there any discussion? All right, John, could you call the roll? Josh Heatherly? Yes. Tony Gross? Yes. Mike Hargis? Yes. Jeff Lorenz is absent. Glenn Reddick? Yes. All right, the motion passes. <clears throat> Item B is a motion to approve first reading of ordinance 20-004, amending the town of Kingston Springs public records policy. Just to, as a quick explanation, the primary change here is to nail down some of the, uh, for lack of a better term, vague language, um, specifically where it indicates there is a minimum cost for copying of public records that may be waived if desired. Rather than having it say may be waived, we wanted to kind of hammer that down and have a very distinct it will or will not. So in some cases, uh, we didn't want to get in a position where some cases we would waive it, some cases we would not. So that's what the language is primarily changing uh, in the fee schedule. We can't get far out of um, what is, is mandated, but we just wanted to hammer that down rather than having it uh, be up in the air. Yeah. All right, any other discussion? All right. Uh, actually, I guess do we have a motion to approve ordinance 20-004? Motion, motion to approve, Glenn. Do we have a second? Second. Josh. Josh, okay. Uh, any, any discussion? All right, John, could you call the roll? Josh Heatherly? Yes. Tony Gross? Yes. Mike Hargis? Yes. Jeff Lorenz is absent. Glenn Rennie? Yes. Motion passes. Item C is a motion to approve resolution 20-005, approving Reliant Bank as depositor for municipal funds and authorized city manager to, exec to execute contract for same. So this I assume uh, stems from the fact that we previously used Community Bank and Trust and now they are Reliant Bank, right? Actually, Mayor, I think, and, and Jamie was the one, I think that's been spearheading this, the state statute requires that we now have contracts um, right. to our banking services, and it has to be reviewed uh, no no later than every four years. And so she had uh, jumped on this and, and gotten to work on it. And so we were able to pull together um, bids 
And Jamie, I think this, this was the only one that you received back. Is that correct? Correct. Um, and then we, um, we asked them to provide a, a contract and what they provided was, it was really more of a signatory kind of form. Uh, so I, I put together a contract uh, just to satisfy statutory requirements. Uh, so that's what, what you have. All right. Do we have a motion to approve resolution 20-005? This is Mike, I make a motion we approve it. Do we have a second? Second, Josh. John, could you call the roll? Josh Hadley? Yes. Tony Gross? Yes. Mike Hargis? Yes. Jeff Lorenz is absent. Glenn Remick? Yes. All right. Motion passes. We have no surplus items. Uh, and discussion only, something that we've, we've neglected or not necessarily neglected, but I would like to still go through is we, we still have to deal with the issues surrounding court uh, uh, and court fees. And I'd also like to look at speed limits again, because those are things that we've discussed doing and haven't done. And I'd also like to look at our fines one more time. I know we've discussed this before, but I've been brought to my attention, you know, where some some pretty extreme speeding sometimes results in a pretty minimal uh, penalty. So um, those are just some things I'd like to discuss in the future. So just maybe. I next time. If I could interject, Tony, that's uh, Martha Brooke alluded that um, we do have our new municipal code that MTASC has updated for us. She and I are going to talk about a few things that we would like to um, uh, add or potentially change or bring before the, the commission to review. One of those is court costs and um, uh, municipal fines. So that is in the works and, and should be something that we'll be able to present to the board within the next couple of months. Great. That sounds good. I appreciate that. I had, uh, uh, Oh, were you going to say something, Josh? Go ahead. Yeah, uh, I don't know if this was on Chiefs that or who was on this. Where are we at on the the speed, speed bumps or speed limiters down by the park? Roger Parker has ordered them, and they just have not come in. Oh, okay. So we okay, good. Yes, they are ordered. I talked to them about them probably Monday of this week. So good. <laughs> I think there'll be three sets between the park and um, the uh, uh, coming out of the tree tunnel. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Oh, good. It's getting busy down there. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> yeah, I think he's just waiting on shipping, and I think they were delayed like everything else has been. So, yeah. Uh, hopefully, they'll come in soon. Okay. All right. Anything else anyone want to add? I guess and uh, under reminders, of course, with the citywide yard sale was uh, was postponed. The farmers market starts this Saturday. Uh, City hall is closed on the 25th, and of course, the fishing rodeo unfortunately has had to been canceled because of the delivery of fish being ill timed. I would like to address that. Yeah, go ahead. So I saw John's email, but I just want y'all to understand: TWRA will not be able to have fish the first week of June. What it is, is they have bought out most of the hatcheries in Tennessee. Um, we used to get, TWR, blah, TWRA used to contract with local hatcheries to provide those fish. And over the last, I guess, seven, eight years ago, they actually bought out those hatcheries and maintained them themselves. And what's happened is, I don't know if it's because of the virus, they're short staffed or whatever, but when, our local agent called me today to tell me that they were bringing them today. He was very, very unhappy, but he said it was beyond his control um, because of the fact that they have to deliver those hatcheries provide for the whole state. So there's probably 170 something ponds that get these fish. So the schedule was pushed up because they go west to east because the hatcheries are in the West Tennessee area and that it got moved up. And he, basically what he's saying is it's gonna take them two and a half full weeks to get the fish to all the ponds across the state by free fishing day. Hmm. So I, I and unless we go Alabama, you know, somewhere crazy, it's gonna cost twice as much because of the delivery fee. I don't know where we get them. Yeah. 
And I will tell you, Brad Bagwell is our local agent, and he was very, very upset because we weren't supposed to get them till the Tuesday before. And he didn't find out till they were already on their way. So I'm just not sure it could have been prevented. Okay. I know it could there, have been prevented. Is, is there any way, and, and maybe John and Brandy, you could answer this, that we could, uh, because of free fishing day, we could still – even though we're not having the rodeo, just kind of make an announcement that it's free fishing day and maybe some people, you know. Just a yeah, we can do that. I just, um, I, our honest thought on it, and we talked about it for a couple of hours today, was <laughs> there's just no way to keep people out of the pond for two and a half weeks. No. And it, it'll just be a really sad morning for those kids when they can't catch them like they're used to, you know. <sighs> I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know an answer. It, it's, it's very upsetting to me because it's my favorite event we do. Yeah. So I do know the Boy Scouts needed that event for some of their they kids needed it for their hours. So if you still advertise free fishing day, I feel like they would still come down and set up and help and, you know, I don't know what you cook hot dogs and hand out or what. Since I mean, if we did free fishing day, I mean, this is just kind of, throwing this out there i mean there's certain things obviously we can't do like the awards and stuff like that and do that but we could maybe still do some door prizes or something you think i don't know um, i mean i don't think the kids are going to catch enough fish to get the prizes well i'm saying like but where we just do the drawings yeah can we, can we some drawings for door prizes i don't know can we limit the number of fish people can walk away with now i mean i think you guys gotta be you've got to remember we're still under the 50 gathering thing we normally have 120, 30 kids, so that's 260 people with one parent, not just two. Yeah. I mean, you, we've got to yeah. be careful what we yeah. push to the public just with the constraints we have right now. Yeah, that's, that's a I don't know. I, I don't know. If, I don't know a good answer. Yeah. I, I think everybody understands what's going on. You know, we'll have the... I mean, we can always, a lot of the places, I went onto the TWRA website to see, and I will tell you, eight out of 10 people have canceled already. Um, yeah. But some of them have postponed them, and I don't know if there's a likelihood that maybe we could get fish later in the summer. And, you know, but the problem is you don't have free fishing day, and every uh -huh. kid that came would have to buy a fishing license. Well, so, maybe we could just, yeah, maybe we could just say it's free fishing day. That's probably good enough. <laughs> I'm open. I'm open to suggestions. Yeah. I really don't know the right answer. It, I, and I don't want to drag this on, but if it is free fishing day, Chief, are we going to have to have patrol if we're still under 50? I guys? don't think, our, I, I think as long as we're not advertising it and trying to draw people into a gathering, I don't see that that's our liability. It would be TWRAs at that point since they police the lake. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> And yeah, you could they even have regulation over our lake. Oh, okay. and, and you could We're, even do exactly what, like what you're talking about, is just say, hey, it's it's while while we regret that we cannot host the fishing rodeo, you know, in being compliance with state or with the governor's mandate. Remember that it is free fishing day, so get out with your family and you know small group fish together or something along those lines, and then that way it's not a a city organized event in contravention of the guidelines because they can fish in the river too and, and the river's there the river's there well and just the last thought may, uh, maybe quickly put together a little map of the fishing areas that way everyone knows that it's just not the pond that way it does spread it because a lot of people don't know where you can you can, right. fish, you can fish from both parks well you can't really from city park not really but there there are quite a few public areas and that may help us spread everybody out not trying to create more work, but just. Yeah. I, that's, that's interesting. That's a good idea because there's, there's several places along the river there that people could get river access and spread out. Okay. All right. Well, access there, points in Burns Park, so. Uh -huh. Sorry, Brandy, I, I missed that. So we have several accesses in Burns Park that they yeah. can get. Yeah. All right. Uh, is there anything else anybody wants to add? I think we're exhausted exhausted this agenda i right, do have a motion to adjourn the meeting motion to adjourn glenn second second josh all in favor 
Aye. 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 All right.